I'm I'm the first person on the planet who's getting to uh, talk back to the interviewer but okay yeah design patterns i think it is very important that we talk about low level design interviews and what's the best way to talk about interviews mock interviews let's do a mock low level design interview where we see how design patterns can be used but today we are going to be using interview ready because it has this new feature of mock interviews and i'm going to be the first person to use it so obviously i'm going to interview gorup he also interviewed me and the video is up on his channel so do check out both the videos and let us know how you like them but in this video i am the one who is going to get to grill him so stay tuned let's get started correct let's start the interview yeah so you must have heard of alpen company right yes so this is what you have to do you have to design classes for system which can provide different types of services right okay and i want you to specifically talk about these two apis create service and get my previous services Or you can uh, make any changes to this. Like I have given like a tentative API to you. Okay, okay. So I have to design classes for a system which can provide different types of services. Uh, and this is related to Urban Company, which is a company uh, that provides uh, executives who can come and do usually housework uh, or uh, work related to repairs, carpentry, uh, plumbing. Okay, cleaning. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that 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 is a service so i can create a service or create an order uh, is that the right thing it's a service is like an order yeah okay okay and then you have an id of that order uh, and then you also have a user id so who has asked this okay and i'll i'll probably be making some changes to this api uh, the second thing is get my previous services which means you want a list of all services that a person has earlier asked for uh, or uh, Okay. Does get my previous services include the scheduled services which are which are yet to be completed or no? Okay. My previous services is literally current time my uh, before current time so with things which have completed. Okay. It does not uh, include my current services also, right? Like if a person is, it does not include only completed services. Okay. But uh, services can be anything. So when it comes to Cleaning, not cleaning, can be a kitchen, it can be a bathroom, can be room cleaning, right? So, how would you design your classes? How would you, like, you know, create a separate environment for that? Okay, okay. So, okay. I am okay. One of the things is so I am seeing here that there is in the CRUD model. I am seeing that we are doing create, uh, and we are also doing something like there's no delete here. There's no uh, update. There's read though. Okay, so we are reading our old records uh, as a list, and we are creating uh, records. Uh, and okay, we need classes for this. So I'll just start with a basic rough idea of what's coming in my mind, um, and based on that, I'll I'll try to see if things are working. Uh, there is a service has a ID. Uh, it also has a user who. asks for this service uh it there is a uh, there is a person who's a uh, an executive or a, we can say a work work person id uh, which is basically a person who has been assigned this can there be multiple people who are assigned this single task um for now just to keep things simple i am taking a single company which is responsible for this so i will say a company id or a sub Uh, service executive id a company id is basically a person or a, or an entire company who has taken up this task this task uh, or this service so it might be that uh, this service has been taken up by acme acme cleaners uh, and i just have their company id here who has taken up this service for this user uh, it's also going to have a time stamp um now that is a created at time stamp so i won't keep it here i'll keep it in the database as current time uh, when is it scheduled is an important thing so that will be uh, scheduled for 
uh, okay i can also keep a created at actually just to keep things simple okay it is scheduled for a particular time apart from this there's also some payment uh, that could possibly be there so that will be a payment object so i might actually end up breaking these uh, classes further down depending on if it's the right thing to do so a payment will have an amount uh, usually all of them are in indian currency so i don't think i need to note the currency uh, i could i could note the payment method maybe um i could also have an id of course for payment id okay uh, what else would make sense here uh, who has made the payment yeah who has made the payment will again be another thing so user id okay i think that's enough the amount the payment method the and the amount can be float uh, the payment method is going to be possibly enum uh, id is going to be uh, you know of type id which is not enum it's a string a uh, user id is also going to be a string it's a foreign key so that is for now sufficient okay payment payment for a particular service also so i can it's a service id also but does it always have to be a service no it can be sometimes uh, maybe a premium subscription also so i can maybe put a reason there uh, so why is this payment being made yeah okay uh, th this is roughly what i'm getting in payment uh, um, is this making sense uh, or should i i mean is this something that you are expecting uh, me to note down the objects and then uh, think about the requirements or or is there something else that you would like me to do uh, this is fine but uh, i think this is very generic for all the services i would also like to focus on uh, you know how you going to create a particular service like how are services related so if you could talk about that also. okay 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 so the one of the things is if there is a service can it have child services no i i don't want to go there i i don't want to uh, go for child services or okay now every time i make an order uh, let's say in urban club i can have five or six services that i take which as a combo are cheaper so but uh, there's two ways to do this one is to offer a discount coupon code at the payment itself uh, yeah. right. it got okay. to services okay so what is a service let me let me try to figure out what is a service a service actually is provided by a company uh to a user uh there is a service id that the service has uh we are we mention the exact date and time when this is so this is date time uh okay uh, then there is okay service id i'll just say this is a string this is also a string company id is also a string okay now apart from that we have uh, created a timestamp i'm not very interested uh there needs to be some sort of description for the service uh how many people came no okay uh if there is a service there it has to be done at a particular time and then it has to have a description so that is one thing then there can be a title of a service uh okay now is the problem uh, if you ask for a service there are certain people who are ready to provide that service so 
uh, there are let's say employees of urban club actually it's a third party thing from what i understand but let us let us just call them employees for now or uh, companies so they are people who are ready to provide that service uh, what will end up happening is you will get matched to this employee when you make a request service request uh, we will check whether the type of service so I, i'll just this type is like an enum is something that this employee provides if they provide it uh, then i will match you with them depending on where they are right now location and uh, uh, the their availability so okay there is there is a service id there is a service type what is the difference between service id and service type is a question why why should i ha huh, a service id is an order id so okay okay i am mixing the two here i am and actually is it service type right right so this is uh, i i am mixing the two um service id is basically type so that's the string uh, and there is also something called order so in order there is so this has no scheduled for here scheduled for will be here uh, user no user is not here user is here company again this is this is an order for a particular service okay uh, and this is a service has an id i mean this is what's coming in my mind uh, do let me know if i'm going totally uh, elsewhere uh, price as every service has a price uh, sorry uh, service id is something that all the services that have whatever you have mentioned till now right or also that going to have right right but there are going to be some specific things that are going to be specific to some particular services right uh could you give me an example actually i can't, i can't think of any any kind of service which is going to require very custom uh, so for example carpentry okay there's going to be different price uh, ranges different descriptions but yeah, yeah but custom also uh, add ons hey hey uh, salon services versus cleaning services okay okay uh, versus carpentry services okay uh, so in salon services they can be multiple things which will be depend on cleaning services right like uh, products used and number of people okay cars uh now products used can also be the cleaning service okay okay so uh, expected number of hours is one of the things that we can do uh, there is also uh, like okay what products are used i would think that that would be in the description uh, the reason being that uh, if one thing that is uh, coming here is that add ons add ons might be something that we can have specific to a service like for example you are you want to do uh, house cleaning and then okay 50 rupees more and we'll do a curtain cleaning for you uh, which may not be like you can't separately order for a curtain cleaning uh, nobody is going to travel and clean your curtain but if you are doing the entire house cleaning 50 rupees more yeah okay i'll i'll clean your fan i'll clean the curtain so that i have seen happens uh, uh, when you when you are doing something you might have a add on kitchen cleaning okay fine we'll clean your utensils also or we'll remove your utensils as a 200 rupee add on uh, anything custom I, i think there there also has to be some some metadata uh, which is basically like in a haircut there's a particular style that you can choose so when you choose a style uh, that needs to be stored somewhere that particular type of haircut so that will be the service id's haircut uh, but the the metadata actually defines what the service will be like okay now anything else like apart from apart from add-ons and apart from metadata metadata is a very generic tag i don't want to use it uh, but is there any other way that i can uh, you know break down metadata into more concrete form can you pick any yeah. three services okay and okay design the api service for like which would work for all the people okay i'll just take three sample services 
uh, and I'll say uh, haircut, uh, cleaning, and carpentry. Oh. So, right now, in I'm just remembering like stuff which is done here. Uh, if there is a carpentry service that I have picked up, I'm probably going to be saying, okay, you need to get a power drill. You need, uh, okay, you can mention what is required. There can be an argument that the service itself should describe exactly what is going to happen. Uh, and also you can make an argument that in the metadata or in the add-ons, that much data should be captured. Uh, I think to start off with, I would like to go uh, with this much information. If I see that there is something missing, I can, I can move forward then. Cleaning and haircut. Whenever I order a haircut, I have to mention the type of haircut I have. Uh, and also if I want anything along with it, like if there's a shave or something. Uh, yeah, that's similar in cleaning. So th this is what I'm seeing in the service right now. An order is a particular service which has been asked for from a company by a user uh, and it is scheduled for a particular time. So the status also is there actually, which is, is this canceled or not? So it can be enum actually. Is it, uh, is it requested in which case company ID can be null? Uh, if it is scheduled, then company ID is there, but it's not yet done, uh, ongoing and then completed or canceled. That would be the status of the order. Uh, uh, payment is like a standard payment where you have a user making a payment uh, using a particular amount with a reason and a discount possibly. Okay, and a payment also we can have a status refunded or failed or uh, succeeded. Okay. Okay, now if a person wants to create a service, they can create it this way. If the person wants to make an order, uh, they can they can hit our API. Uh, I'll just describe the API also, but is this part, is this part uh, fine or should I dig deeper into this? Or fine. different? Okay, and then I'll ask my question. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Uh, how do I, okay. Let's say I want to create service API, so. All right. All right. So thinking about how is this create service and get my previous services going to be, it's going to be a single microservice probably, which is going to be taking, uh, accepting like requests to create a new service. This is probably going to happen in the backend. Uh, we are not going to let users create services or you might have a, you might have a specific app made just for internal employees where they can create a service, like creating a carpentry service. This is going to be only after uh, the product team has said that, yes, this is a kind of service that open company wants to provide. Uh, that's, that's what we want to do. So, okay. So we have service manager. Uh, this is the microservice, which has create service. Uh, this API takes, it doesn't take an ID. It takes a description. Uh, it's like a form where you can fill in the title of the service. You can fill in the title of the service. Yes. So the title of the service can be carpentry or it can be uh, uh, create bed or some sort of furniture like a uh, chair. Okay. Make chair or something. Like, no, they're not going to come home and make the chair. Okay. Uh, All right. So, uh, there are going to be specific number of services that our company is going to provide, right? Right. You cannot leave that up to description. There have to be specific number of things that you can choose from. That, okay, we give these services and you choose from that. Right. Do you think it should be a description? So the title can, uh, okay. I, I see where you're coming from. Uh, the service has a particular type. Uh, I'm, I'm now getting where you're coming from. Okay. So 
because there are let's say 15 kinds of things that a person can provide a service for one of them is uh, salon one of them is carpentry uh, we need to also classify or group services according to their type so the metadata and all this is going to distinguish them not group them i need something to group them okay because tomorrow if i have like like 50 services you cannot decide based on description and title right it's just going to be very messy right right yeah no those users searching is not natural they have to they usually go for the yes i want in uh cleaning something something or in plumbing yes fix my tap yes uh, fix that 50 rupee tap okay yeah and then they go ahead so there has to be some classification there has to be some parent also okay so this is not as basic as just so i have to now choose whether i want to do this at one layer which is just at a high level carpentry, high level plumbing, high level cleaning, or do I want to go deeper and create two layers or, or do I want to make it very uh, extendable and make it N layers? Like you can go on adding more layers as you want. Yeah. That's what I meant when I said, how will you relate the services to Okay. Okay. So, okay. There is a kind of a hierarchy that I can see here. Uh, and, uh, in my mind, what I'm getting is like, if I have to make a tree uh, or a graph, then uh, yeah, at the moment I can just think of, I, I can just start with a tree. I don't need to make a graph uh, right now. Uh, the idea is that who's my parent or, or which group do I belong to? Which groups do I belong to? Okay. If there is a notion of a group, is it a separate object? What is a group? Does a group have a particular description? Yes, it does. Carpentry has a description. Carpentry has an image also. Uh, services also have an image. That thing is something I forgot. Uh, should probably note that down. Okay. Uh, apart from that, does so carpentry can come in under manual work. Uh, okay, multiple levels. Uh, just give me one minute. Let me think about if I can uh, hmm. find this linking services. Okay, one of the things that I can do is, uh, okay. no, I'm sorry, give me one more minute. There's a group. What's coming in my mind is I can define groups, uh, groups of services, uh, and I can have their own description, their own ID, uh, and uh, I can make every child service, like basically the, the leaf service in this tree, uh, have all of their parents noted down. So for example, if I have one of them being a uh, housework, that is the, that's the root level. Then I go down and I go to carpentry. Then I go to furniture. Okay, there might be repairs. There might be other things also in carpentry. Uh, in furniture, I go to chairs. Uh, and then in chairs, finally, I provide the service. So uh, instead of chairs, it could have been beds. It could have been tables. But uh, this is like, okay, I went three or four levels down. So the user on the UI can go on clicking and... Um, depending on the group that they're selecting, they are getting a, a more detailed view of these services. So, and then when we say get services, get my previous services. Okay. Okay. Get my previous services. I would, I would rename this to get my previous services. Okay. Fine. Get my previous orders uh, services. I think is correct. Yeah. Someone has come and serve service the place. 
but yeah this is this is what i'm getting so if i say uh, there is a group a list of groups so you belong to a list of groups uh, which is basically all the parent groups that you are a part of and then we have group uh is this is this looking fine go on like let me get a clearer picture then sure okay so a group has a description uh and it also has a title and it also has a image url okay so the uh, for example a group can be just writing the examples here for example a group can be uh, uh car pen tree uh, and a service can be uh chair repair i'm sorry uh, basically if it, if this is the service chair repair then it's going to have a parent of carpentry one of the parents uh, it might also have another parent which is chair so inside carpentry inside chair related stuff uh, you get to chair repair in the end okay. that's one of the ideas when it comes to noting down services uh, they are parts of groups and groups themselves can have you know a description for carpentry can be written that uh, any woodwork kind of stuff we are taking care of the title is carpentry and then you have image url of someone creating something uh yeah this is this is one way in which i can describe the hierarchy uh, of selection and under it all the leaves can be the services and if a person asks for a service i create an order for them and then i through the status i uh, manipulate whether a company has accepted it or what is the status of this order so how do you design the creation of such a structure okay uh how would i do this as a class okay so i'll just write some code here class so it's okay if a person has to create a service they have to also mention all the groups which it belongs to uh so the groups have to already exist so i have to also create groups uh it should be like create group and then i have to mention the group id okay so when you say group group meaning like cleaning or uh service yes yes larger groups and then smaller ones till the point that it comes to a service let's say we have groups okay let's say you have different okay how about creation how are you uh creating a service yeah okay okay so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a api which is going to return a response so it's going to give 200 okay or it's going to give a response uh, it's also going to be service response uh, create service uh, i'm going to be taking a not an id i'm going to be taking a string for title uh, i'm going to be so pretty much everything is still the same in uh, in the api except that we also have a bunch of groups that we can define so this is going to be double amount uh, we have a number of expected hours okay this can be or number of expected minutes if we want it to be more accurate might be a 15 minute service also Uh, okay now add ons is not as simple as just saying add ons uh, this has to be a this has to be a proper object okay possible add ons more like okay so a list of this is what we have so i'll just describe add on in a minute mm -hmm. but we have uh, and we have a list of groups 
if you want uh, an image url we can keep an image url now i'm wondering whether i really need metadata uh, the the idea was that okay if you are doing a haircut then you want a particular style of a haircut that can be stored in the metadata and the the barber who's coming or the salon professional who's coming can see and decide on looking at the metadata what the person needs uh, okay so I'll, I'll keep the metadata actually Okay. Uh, so even now, like which particular service you're creating is where you will come to know using the title and the description, correct? Yes, the title and the description. Uh, once they are at the service, before that, when they're searching, they can search on title, they can search on description. Uh, they can uh, also search on group. So once they click on a group, all the child services or the child groups will be next visible on the UI. Okay, uh, I'm getting a bit confused because you were saying that first they are searching, second you were saying that when they select a group child option So are they searching or are they selecting from the options? Which option? So either uh, they have a search bar above, uh, just like in Zomato, you can say ice cream, you can click on the group uh, and then all possible ice cream uh, outlets come up or you can actually search for ice cream above and it's going to do a text search. Uh, and then it's going to tell you the dishes or the restaurants which actually provide that ice cream. But so in the end you're going to say you must find them. You're going to spam. Yeah. So I'm going to be storing the description and the title in the string. But the groups are like, uh, yeah, the groups also have a title and a description which is a string. So, okay. No. Uh, this is the, the number of groups are less. It's not going to be an explosion of groups. You might have at most 100, 200, 500 groups. So they, we can treat them almost like enums. Uh, they are like properties for us. Uh, they never change. Uh, immutable. Okay. Even title and description. Uh, back to my first question. Are, are those fixed or are those random? So I think all of these, the service and the group, uh, is totally fixed. There is nothing here that we can change very easily. If we are making a change, then it's it's a big change. It's not going to be a code change. It's not going to be something random. It's going to be uh, pulled from the database, which is like a source of truth. So uh, for the for the middleware, it's like immutable stuff. None of this can change. Uh, you can keep basically object pool over here. Uh, you don't need to create them multiple times. You also want to keep them immutable so that uh, there is no, you know, multiple people, no one's going to make a change over here. So you might as well uh, reuse that object. So yeah, something like, okay, uh, that is definitely the case when it comes to payments or when it comes to orders. Yeah, there's going to be different orders and different payments based on the situation. But yeah, uh, that is how I'm imagining it right now. Uh, say uh, tomorrow something goes wrong outside the service, okay? You are just responsible for your service. Right. And someone passes some random uh, junk title and description. Right, right. So, okay. So the way I'm looking at it then is that, okay, do I want a breaking change? Anytime a person changes a title, do I want to update my client and say, no, this title I... I... Yeah, I mean, I am the service manager someone passes a junk title, which I am not aware of as a service manager, I will reject it. I will say it's a 401 bad request uh, and, uh, oh sorry, 400 bad request and uh, yeah. So tomorrow if there is any service at home, you're going to change this API this and No, no, uh, I won't change the API, but uh, I will need a, either I'll need a restart of my service, which is pretty extreme because things happen and titles and services change, or I will need to validate in uh, some sort of a cache uh, that, you know, this title and this thing exists, basically this service ID and everything exists. Okay. Okay. Now, why do I need to actually, I'm creating a service here. Uh, okay. Through this API. Yeah. This has to be a whitelisted API. Nobody can use it on, only people inside the company can use it. Um, 
the thing is once there is an id for a service i don't expect people to give a uh, you know if they're doing a order they are just sending me the service id they're not going to be sending me the title so they are going to be sending me minimum data that they need for this booking the user the scheduled time the company and the service id so they can't make mistakes by they you know by mistake they could have sent instead of carpentry uh, they can say carpentry for two but uh, because they are just sending the id in the back end if the service is updated uh, they don't need to worry they just send the id and it's a mapper for them yeah. okay uh, should i yeah. okay uh, should i write the code for this wait okay uh, so i need some sort of a db connection right right no so every time i create a service i actually probably will be storing this in a cache also because a lot of other services are going to be asking me for getting a list of services uh, give me this service for carpentry uh, and i'm i don't want to be pulling it from the database all the time i'm going to be keeping it in a cache uh, i'm also going to be at the like asynchronously i can uh, actually not asynchronously synchronously first when i'm creating a service i'm going to be populating it in the database when it says yes i go and populate it in the cache also so now my cache always has all possible services that people can ask for uh, when it comes to get my previous services uh, that is basically get the previous orders i have made earlier uh, in which case i need a order service a separate microservice which is going to be storing all possible orders you create orders by actually sending these parameters uh, and also a payment id actually uh, so that that actually makes an order uh, once you have these orders and you want to see your previous orders i go to the database i can uh, index it on user id so because it is my previous orders there is this particular thing which is going to be common Uh, i'm also probably going to be indexing in on status of uh, you know wh whether it is successful or failed or whatever but uh, maybe i want to show the old failed orders also so i can just pick up all this data from do a select star and give them all the services that they have scheduled uh, in the past so it's going to have a time stamp on the database which i can do a select query with but uh anything else you would like to mention since we are uh well yeah i just like to emphasize again that uh, services are never changing like you mentioned so i can use immutable objects uh, and also keep an object pool of this uh, and finally like caching would be a bit of a thing that i would like to see later so god let me talk about the negatives first okay things that could have been improved Uh, improvement areas so uh, when it comes to uh, i was again and again asking you to talk about the relationship between the uh, services right that you would provide like uh, there will be some fixed amounts of, of services and i'll honestly say what i had in mind okay i thought that uh, you could as you said you would have group like cleaning services salon services spa services right so and you had to do creation and these were related and you yourself uh, told about the problem that we'll have you know every time we add a service we'll have to build the entire thing again so the solution could have been factory design pattern you could have had a factory which would have taken care of the creation so i was expecting that and uh, that uh, so when that was happening we could have also talked about services that you know uh, how these services are related how they are inherited like uh, from uh, from salon services what all things are inherited from cleaning services what all things are inherited so uh, that would have been a more structured approach uh i like that you took care of uh, payment and all although i was not expecting you to i asked you to talk only about you know uh, place order and get my previous order details uh but uh, you talked about payment and i like how you wrote in a very uh, structured way that what all things will be part of which or class so that was good but uh, structuring between the classes could have been better is what i feel so that's the feedback from my end <laughs> Okay okay that sounds useful uh, do you have any feedback for me as an interviewer i think as an interviewer you were uh, i mean there was not much 
feedback i was thinking about myself only in that uh, time because i, I had to uh, you know think about the question uh, i didn't feel threatened i didn't feel there was no uh, problem you 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 were also guiding me uh, you know giving me the right hints uh, i think uh, some of the things really helped like for example when you mentioned that uh, you can group things which will help not just in the back end but also in the ui for searches so mm-hmm. that was a i mean as an interviewer you, you were you were great uh, i i didn't feel there was any issue thank you for that uh, if i had to give a little bit of feedback on the feedback then that would be like okay i did not expect the factory pattern to come in because i did not see uh, common parts of the objects being created uh, mm-hmm. by let's say you know if you are talking about carpentry or about salon uh, if there's a particular service i i don't know where exactly the factory pattern will be able to help us here because in the pattern if i say yes this is a carpentry type of job then i i i cannot see where uh, certain things are going to be automatically filled in by the factory which i don't have to do it manually so uh, in my personal opinion that's why i was trying to keep it as flexible as possible using groups or using strings but yeah you're right there might be some things that i have missed uh, which could have been made into a common functionality and then exposed as a common api on the factory my major concern was the storing things as strings like because tomorrow titles may change or descriptions may change like i i think uh, we should use class objects rather than you know strings to identify which particular service we are looking for that was my major concern now pattern could have been strategy even i thought of decorative pattern that you keep adding services to a particular service or a factory design pattern that was up to you like uh, but my point was that you know strings keep it very like i personally think it would become very messy in in like long term when you are when there are a lot of services say 50 100 services are there then it might become really messy especially if tomorrow you want to change your title or description okay okay so uh, uh, you would like them to be enums or uh, something else like uh, i would personally prefer it to be class objects like okay. it could be enum also but uh, I mean, uh, the title inside the title. What's going to be? The, if it's an enum, then yes, it's just a, it's like a hard coded thing. Uh, okay. But if it's a, if it's a class object, uh, what will be the internal parameters? I'm just asking because I I want to like figure out. Right, right. So I'm also uh, thinking out loud only, right? So when I am saying uh, class objects, say so there is a key. <laughs> what i'm i'm the first person on the planet who's getting to uh, talk back to the interviewer but okay yeah please yes okay so what i had in mind is that they could be service and then uh, house how like cleaning services uh, carpentry services spa services could be derived from that and now uh, within the cleaning services they could be bathroom cleaning they could be kitchen cleaning so right so now cleaning services could have similar products like you know what all things you use to clean similarly salon services could have similar products or uh similar services that you want to add on like you know add on services or uh, uh like it, it would help in a lot of things in long term like marketing or uh, say if you want to place discounts on particular service types like particular service group so it is better to uh, group them in objects so tomorrow if i have to do something on a particular group you do it together that for all the cleaning services do this i want to add one particular person for all the services that are related to salon services or something like that uh it, it makes sense right yeah yeah no i i can totally understand if you have a particular discount coupon that you want to give or you want to say that uh, in chennai we only offer carpentry in lucknow we only offer uh, salon services so uh, that can help um can't think of a particular uh, way in which we can do this easily uh, in, in, that's in, why i also mentioned strategy pattern i'm not sure if it would be the best way but strategy pattern is what takes care of this multiple things right as you said like in lucknow there are these particular services so that's what we do in strategy pattern that uh, like you know i want these these services present in this particular place like right yeah that might that might help yeah yeah you pass in lucknow and then uh, through a property or through some way you you say that okay fine for lucknow i behave in this way for uh, chennai i behave in another way okay yeah that 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 could be one thing yes yes Uh, yeah. and also the discount coupon codes and everything yeah that might also help yes yes but from strings i really think it would be like too messy in long term like you couldn't take care of so many things 
Right. No. Uh, I, yeah. Let's leave it at that. I'm. I'm actually the alternative is something that I can't think of uh, at the moment. Like apart from strings for a title, uh, w- mm. w- and Enum is not going to cut it for me because. It's the same thing as it. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's it, even if it is not the same thing. Like Enum is way too rigid. Uh, you know, I can create immutable objects, which is effectively like an Enum only. So, uh, but uh, if you're like. What is the problem with the string? The string also is as good as hardcore. I mean, is is uh, there's going to be one instance of that string if you have an immutable object, and also if you make an object like at the end of the day you are nesting the objects into. At the end of the day, there's going to be a string somewhere deep inside it. So, okay, you are saying that no one can touch that string once you make it a class. You are protecting it. Nobody can. It becomes immutable. Is that the concern? My concern is. to mo- right now i'm talking only about create services tomorrow there might be so many different apis right now if you use a string as an identifier now tomorrow okay. if i change my title right will you really change it in so many places i know enum solves that problem but uh, still like it doesn't solve the other problems that we talked about right that i want to perform certain number of actions on certain types of services okay okay i'm i'm that's a, that's a really good point yeah i mean uh, i can pass anything in the title and i can pass um i i'm i'm understanding your point because it's a back end thing uh, i i wasn't too concerned about it but you are right even if you are going to have a title uh, which can change and then you're going to pass the same are you going to keep an id just to get an idea are you going to keep a title id for everything which is going to map to a string value of the title so what i was thinking was that like you know if we have objects like each object will have an identifier like so that id will be of the object like what so that from the id itself we come to know that okay this is of which type what are the parents of like that particular object type and you will know that exactly what it means okay 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 that that sounds that sounds good yeah yeah cool uh, i hope you had fun interviewing i at least had a lot of fun yeah yeah of course uh, it was it was interesting uh, i think uh, for a long time i didn't I was just trying to fi- uh, find out the features and how to like just meet the requirements. But then later on, I started actually thinking about okay, how are you going to actually do it in terms of engineering? So that that was really useful. Awesome. Also, long uh, low level design interviews are usually um much much longer. Like this was very short compared to you know what we had. So I think it's okay to have discussed only this much in this much time. Uh, but usually, uh, LLD interviews are much longer. We started a bit late, so. Yeah, yeah, they la- they last for approximately one and a half hours, if not two. Um, yeah, we have some <laughs> designs and interview ready, which are like really, really deep. So over here, like we uh, we are talking over there, we actually also code and write tests. But okay, awesome. And I'd like to uh, tell all the viewers that don't forget to use the coupon code Kiti while you use the <laughs> while you buy interview ready to assess all the services. So yeah. 